Hey, Algebra 2 students, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mr. Griffin, do you hate us? Did you would assign us Math Excel lesson 9.3? What were you thinking? What are you trying to do to us? Well, in the words of that world renowned uh, philosopher Kelly Clarkson, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Or was that Nietzsche? Anyway, regardless, I want you to relax. If you kick this lesson's butt in Math Excel, good for you. You will get the credit for it. If, on the other hand, it kicked your butt, I won't let the grade for this harm your average. All right, so I'll either excuse it or I will put in your homework average for that grade so it doesn't have any, any real effect. Um, however, you know, do what you can, struggle through it, try to do as much of it as you possibly can. A lot of this, well not a lot, but some of this will not be on the 9.1, 9.3 opportunity. So just rest, breathe. <gasps> I know that you all have projects coming up and presentations next week, so just, just breathe. Okay, so uh, tomorrow I will post the opportunity and I'll probably put a little video up of what you need to be able to, to do and work a few problems very similar to the things that you'll see on the op. Okay, so uh, you won't have any substitution, for instance. We will work a couple of those just because they're there, but there's no substitution on it. Okay, nonetheless, some of this will apply, but for the most part, the op is not nearly as difficult as this because it's going to focus on the things mostly in 9.1 and 9.2. Okay, nonetheless, let's take a look. So here is problem number one. There it is, and of course, critical to solving this rational equation is to find the LCD. You can always find the uh, least common denominator, or, or at least a common denominator, by multiplying the two denominators together. And that's what we would do in this case. So here's our LCD. And we would multiply through by the LCD. So when I do that, x squared, x plus 2 is going to cancel out here. So I'm going to have 60x equals, um, x is going to cancel out. So I would have uh, 60x here. Uh, plus uh, 120, and here, I'm just going to multiply this whole thing out, okay? I'd have minus 5x squared, uh, 2x, uh, minus 10x, okay? I believe that is, is what I would have here. I got a bunch of like terms to combine. I'm going to do those and move everything over to one side, okay? So, so when I do that, um, 10x um, minus 120 equals zero. Okay, assuming that I did my multiplication right, when I move everything over to one side, there's what I'm going to have. There's a GCF, there's five, I'm going to factor it out, and that leaves me with the following, uh, 524 equals zero. Okay, so this thing will factor, and let's see, when it factors, um, 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 plus two, plus six minus four. Oh, this is minus, there we go. Okay, plus six minus four, there we go. All right, so x could equal negative six or x could equal positive four, okay? So we've solved that and if you were to put these back in there, you would find out that, that this is extraneous, okay? All right, so so there you go. It is a you know, fairly complicated procedure that you've got to go through, but again, you're going to multiply through by that. That shouldn't be difficult for you. You're going to combine like terms, you're going to move everything over to one side, set it equal to zero. Uh, look for a GCF, start factoring this thing, factor out the GCF, uh, then factor this trinomial and set each factor equal to zero and, and there you go. Okay, number two is kind of similar. So here's what number two would look like. And we'd need to factor this to find the LCD. And when we factor this, we're going to find out that p squared minus 16 equals this. Aha. So in the, in the whole scheme of things, the LCD on this would be 4 times that. Now, you would just multiply through by that, combine like terms, and move everything over to one side of the equal sign, factor it, and, and find the solutions. I'm not going to work through that one, okay? All right, let's move to one where we have a radical. And it, the thing that we need to do is isolate the radical first. And so in this case, I'm just going to move that over there. And then I just I kind of just flipped it around. Okay, so oh that's an X there. Okay, so so here we go. I moved I moved that over there, so I end up with this. Now you don't necessarily need to divide this out. Okay, the, the radical is isolated. The coefficient can stay there. As a matter of fact, it's easier if you do it, because otherwise you're going to be dealing with, with fractions. 
Okay, so let's just leave it there. Well, so what do I do? Well, I, I need to, of course, square this thing. So I'm going to use the, the square root principle. And when I do, then I'm going to end up with um, 64 and the square root of x, this would be the square root of x squared, okay, which would be x. Okay, so when I, when I multiply this, I, I would end up with the square root of x squared, and that's just x. Equals, okay, let's foil this thing, and when I foil it, I'm going to get plus 225, okay? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move things all over to, to one side, and when I do, I'm going to get x squared uh, minus 34x, plus uh, 225 equals zero. And you might think, oh my goodness, how difficult is that to, to factor? And then in the whole scheme of things, it turns out not to be particularly difficult. Okay, so it's gonna factor into, into x minus nine, um, x minus 25, okay? So if you were to foil that, then, then you would get, get back to that original thing. So in this case, x could be 9, x could be 25. There's your two solutions. Okay, let's take a look at, at this one here. Okay, once again, I'm going to uh, isolate the radical. So I'm going to move that thing over, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it here. So if I move it over, I have uh, 2x minus 7. Once again, if I, if I squared both sides, okay, I'm going to end up with 25x over here. And I'm going to end up with 4x squared uh, minus 28x plus 49. 28x plus 49. Yes, I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. I worked out the problems in advance. Okay. All right. And, um, and in this case, then I move that over. And I end up with 4x squared uh, minus 53x plus 49 equals zero. I'd have to multiply four to 49. When I do, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get 196. I'm looking for factor pairs of that that are gonna sum to this. And I'm gonna find that that is um, four and uh, four and 49, okay? And as a matter of fact, they are they are negative 4, negative 49. Okay, I would box that, so I'm like kind of running out of room. If I put it down here, I guess, I guess you can see. So if I box all this stuff, I have 4x squared, I have minus 4x, I have minus 49x, and I have 49. So I end up with negative 49, I end up with, with 4x. Uh, up this way, I end up with x and minus 1. So 4x minus 49 at, at times x minus 1, those are my two factors. So in the whole scheme of things, let's see if, if it'll still show up on the camera. So x could equal uh, 49 fourths, does that show up? Uh, or it could equal 1, and uh, by the way, that's extraneous. Okay, all right, so again, quite a bit of work involved. You may have something like that on the, on the opportunity. You will have a few problems where you've got, I think, two or three where you have a, a, a square or a radical in there that you need to take care of. And, and they'll just be square roots. You won't have any cube roots or anything like that. Same sort of thing over here. We'd want to isolate the radical. We'd want to square both sides. When we do, we get uh, 2m minus 8 equals m squared plus 2m plus 1. We've got a perfect square trinomial here. When, uh, when we move everything over, uh, notice that we will get, so m squared uh, um, plus, plus 9 equals 0 is what, we would, is what we would get there. And, of course, if we move that over, as you know, this is not factorable, okay? The sum of squares is not factorable, okay? But if I put m squared equals negative nine, and I, and I use the square root principle on this thing, so square root, take square root of that and this, then I end up with m equals uh, plus or minus um, 
3i, okay? So uh, in the, in the, you might have, you'll have, there's about a couple in which there's an imaginary number in there, but again, it's open book and everything. And you should be kind of familiar with how, how to do that. Um, I'll just do one substitution, this, so I don't have to erase, and I see that I'm already at 10 minutes. So, and you won't have any substitution problem on there. But in substitution, you, you, you've got to put it in standard form, and then you're going to substitute u squared for this, okay? So I'm going to have u squared minus 10 u plus 9 equals 0, okay? So, so x, u squared equals x4, and thus, of course, u equals, would equal x squared. We'll substitute it back in, in, in a moment. So if we, if we take a look at this, this would be u minus 9, u minus 1. Okay, when we factor it, and so u could equal 9 or u could equal 1. Let's put, let's put uh, what u is back in here. So x squared equals 9 or uh, x squared equals 1. So, so x could equal plus or minus 3 or x could equal plus or minus 1. Is that uh, still in, in view? Yeah, okay. All right, so, so just so that you can see how a substitution one is done. All right, so let me post this thing because I'm approaching 12 minutes. And again, I won't let this math Excel, I didn't realize just how difficult it was going to be. Of course, it's oh, it just 13 problems. Anyway, so do what you can on it. I won't let it harm your grade. I will make a short video tomorrow for what you need to know on op 9.1 through 9.3. All right, bye.